Tim Herms. I'm the publisher of BTR, and today we are here with Kevin Wilkes from Comscope. He's a senior sales manager. Kevin, it is great to Hi see too. you. Hi, Tim. Good to see you. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about OTT. Um, with the emergence of OTT video services and the increase of mobile devices accessing networks, operators must continue to meet this surge in data demand. How do you think they're doing it? I think the question that you post, Tim, has uh, been around for a very long time. It's been asked a lot of different ways. The solutions and the answers to the, to the question that you ask are new, and they're much more complex than in years past, just as the uh, operators' networks that they are building and maintaining are much more complex. Ultimately, the short answer, if you will, though, is uh, to remain competitive, uh, address uh, data surge uh, needs, uh, bandwidth needs, the operators must devise and also implement a plan that uh, evolves the HFC network as we know it to a converged IP uh, optical network that delivers both um, IP-based services and Ethernet-based services to the end user. We were talking just a minute ago about bandwidth. Bandwidth is a big thing for me. My family uses a lot of it with computers and a teenager and everything. You said uh, you thought that bandwidth was if not the top one of the top concerns, or at least keep you awake night at night, uh, things for the operators, do you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. It's gotta be the, uh, one of the top three, if not the very top concern. Yeah, it's a good time to be in this industry and watch it all kind of roll out right now. It is exciting. This is Tim Herms again with BTR. Just a moment ago, I was able to spend a few moments with Kevin Wilkes with Comscope, and this time I get to spend a few minutes with Brad Edwards from Comscope. Good to Hi, see Tim. you. Brad, Good you're the product you. manager, right? That's correct. Great. So our question for you was, how can operators push fiber deeper for deployments today or for future deployments by keeping both CapEx and OpEx down? Love Ec to hear this answer. Excellent question, Tim. One of the greatest things that an operator is facing today with the growing fiber demand is how do we manage the rising cost of construction or rebuilding our network? Recognizing that construction costs are going to continue to rise, we've developed E2O, which is a combination solution that brings in coaxial cable, fiber optic cables, or a microduct under one sheath or pre-installed in a conduit. Installation costs are reduced as multiple cable pulls or conduit pulls are eliminated by this single sheath construction. If an operator is facing future growth in terms of subscribers, node splits, or mitigation mm -hmm. to business services, they should incorporate a microduct in the E2O outside plant solution. This enables them to jet microfibers into a conduit now or later. Uh, Microcables themselves are small in form, but they're available up to 144 count. So is this existing duct that's already in the ground or both? It can be both. Uh, we can pre-install these into a duct that you can install, or if you have an existing duct in the ground, we can supply microducts that can be pulled into those conduits. Interesting. These microcables can be jetted at speeds in excess of 250 feet per minute to distances of thousands of feet. Uh, this enables rapid deployment, cost-effective, mitigating all construction costs, both aerial and underground, because you've got those microducts already in place. You've still also got your coaxial cable in place for network powering as it may be required moving forward. Uh, the cables can simply be terminated in the tap or fiber optic uh, terminal. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine our, what's more these days? Is it more underground or still a lot of aerial? Still a lot of aerial plant, but a lot of companies are going to underground when they can, but there still is a lot of aerial. Especially in newer built neighborhoods, I Absolutely. imagine. Absolutely. Interesting. Brad Edwards, thank you for your time thank today. You. Uh, we had another question for you about network architecture, though, and that is what type of a network architecture do you think can cost effectively integrate smaller new builds into an existing HFC infrastructure? Uh, EPON is a um, very effective and attractive, from an IRR standpoint, um, network architecture to um, integrate maybe two to 300 home new builds into an existing HFC structure. Um, RFOG and RFPON provide a means of, of integrating even smaller uh, new builds into an existing uh, HFC infrastructure as well. Kevin, thanks for taking a minute to share with Thank us. Thank you, Tim. All right, we appreciate it. And um, your Comscope booth 563? Yes. And stop by and say hi, Please I imagine. Please do. Please do. All right, I, this is Tim Herms with BTR with Kevin Wilkes from Comscope, and we'll be back after this.